Hello, hello. Welcome. Thank you for watching. Hey, Gonzo. Howdy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. So, yeah, just getting started, getting started today with the ritualistic sound check. I hope I sound okay. I didn't mess with anything, so it should just be the same. Am I even on? I should be. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, so uh, first thing for today. No here? No good, George? Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was like, thank you, Smalio. Can hear. Okay, all right. One of these days I will just sound right from the get-go. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and took care of this. I think after the stream last weekend. Um, at least I think I did. Um, in the Lua code, there was like a special case for level one that was poorly coded by me, I assume. When realistically, there didn't need to be a special case for level one. Um, the code that handles every other number can work just fine for level one. Um, I didn't typically play characters that start at level one. You know, I guess I just pick builds that end up at like level three out of the you know out of the box so i never like would have saw that um so hopefully that's fixed in the dev builds um really soon here i want to actually do a release of you know ncgd lua edition put it on nexus mods you know and, and kind of like official it's been in beta state for over a year now i played with it a ton i mean it's as good to go as it's gonna be i think except for you know stuff like this um that people found for me. So yeah, I guess just jumping into actually real things today. Um, one of the things that's been on the list for a while is this one. It's a key missing thing from the one day list. So get right to it and let's put that in there. And uh, Gonzo, as I chatted with you earlier in the week, I did want to move from this into uh, a discussion about cleaning. Because I had a very interesting experience with cleaning. I'm a, I'm an advocate of cleaning. I think it's something you want to do, generally speaking. But it's, like many things, not a silver bullet and can actually make things worse if you're not careful. Um, so I'll go into more detail about that later on. Um, and it has everything to do with the wonderful, magical nature of the engine that we love. Even the recreation of the engine that we love behaves in the quirky way that it should, like the original. Um, so, And we'll find out about that. Yep. Yes, I did. Gonzo says, "I thought I remembered you saying that earlier. I couldn't remember." Yeah, I did. Well, <laughs> I won't. I won't bury the lead. We'll get into it later. But uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting experience while working on the uh, dynamic distant buildings BCOM Ghostgate Fortress patch. Something caught me completely by surprise, and it was one of those things that, like, later on in the day, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's probably what happened." I say probably because I'm not like. Greatness seven levels of understanding in the engine, you know. But I generally, you know, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> All right, we got a zero. I'm just trying to see where, here we go, where this falls in total overhaul, which is like the, you know, the relative of uh, one day, kind of. Let me just put it right there. But wait, did I... Did I do this already? I mean, I obviously I did. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, look at that. All right, well, hmm. I'm wondering to myself why I thought I didn't have it on here. Oh, because we recently we recently put that on there and I just never ticked it off the box. Oh, all right. Well, hey. Dun Dundee. <laughs> Easy check indeed. Okay. This is another one that came up though. Uh and is what I was just looking at on the site here. The usage notes for this. 
could be better um, and state that they replace this. And in fact, we're going to want to make sure that the CFG generator doesn't include the original DDD Ghostgate patch. So let's do that right now. Let's do both of those things right now. <clears throat> Patches. Uh, all right. This is a slightly less easy check, but I think an easy one nonetheless. Oh, my. No. One of these days, I will not be bothered by that. Okay, so what does it say? Can also be downloaded from GitLab. I feel like that could probably go at the bottom. And this should be the first one. Okay. And the zip file. Um, reasonable amount of information in here we'll say exactly even though it's in the readme for the mod it should be here too as an experiment by the way following some information i got from random pal about deletes being quirky in the engine i actually re-implemented this plugin without any deletes just using the make it invisible nif uh approach and i mean it works all the same It's a really interesting thing, actually, you know, as as we, you know, plan for, you know, mod ideas and stuff. And if we make mods, period, you know, it's something to think about if you're doing something that's potentially, you know, problematic compatibility wise. You know, you want to make it easy for people to be compatible if you can. And that's one of the beautiful things about OpenMW Lua. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. Uh, Gonzo says with the invisible NIF, does the engine skip drawing it? And yeah, uh, in the so in like the CS, you see like a red cone thing that looks very awkward. Not sure about the vanilla CS, but um, in the game, it just you know, I mean, you tested the Ghostgate plugin; they're gone. All right, so what what is it that I want to actually say? comes from that uh it replaces the plugin i think that's actually all we need to say and the real important bit is going to be now hacking into the cfg generator which will which we'll do right now i just had the thought like oh my gosh should we handle simply loading bcom with you know ddd and this but for now we're just going to handle the case of the mod list um, and eventually when the CFG generator and or our data model for plugins is a little smarter and we can say have rules, for example, about what should load with what or not load with what, um, we can handle every case. But for now, we're just going to handle the common case that people will probably run into and put a note maybe. Uh, plugin order. So at BCOM plus. Yeah. Okay. Just thought of that right now. Let's do that. Um, note this plugin replaces the yep. All right. A little extra note for the special cases that we're not going to handle. And now let's... First, let's see the brokenness. Oh, why did I click that? That's what I wanted. I'm going 
go with this. Expanded vanilla should have the same problem. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, this is that's a problem. Hmm. And actually, this has to be handled different from differently from the other hacks. There is two kinds of CFG generator hacks that we have. If we look right here, for example, we have hacks where we have mods who we want to exclude all of their plugins and just use the normal. So in the in in the perspective of the CFG generator, they give the same plugin name. They're in the same position. It doesn't really matter if we remove the original one or the BCM one. Um, so we remove the the mod, but then we re-add it without the plugin. Um, but the other hack that I do, ooh, it's making me cringe a little bit just thinking about it. Yeah, where we have mods maybe that provide many plugins, and we want some of them, but not all of them. And so that's what we need to do here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Right here, you can see, is our special case where we handle having Tomb of the Snow Prince with the distant seafloor mod. We need to have a special plugin. This is another, you know, case where it depends on what combo of mods you're using. So, I think this is true. These three, let's see real quick here. Who's using BCM? Yeah, those three. Okay. And then we want to have a using BCM. Just some more very similar boilerplate. Hideous code. It's the best we can do. We need something to work right now. You know, if we were trying to design the perfect way to do this, it, it would not be this. All right. I'm just trying to, now I'm trying to think, how do we do this? This is something I do once in a very great while, so. Okay, I see. So we say put it down here. And we really have one case here. this is where it gets a little spicy because I'm not sure what number that's supposed to be or how I got these. So this is another bad, bad, bad thing about how I'm doing this. I have just some positionings hard-coded in there. No good. So we're going to have to figure out what that number is, and I know how we can do it. But essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to insert, and I lied, we are going to have an else condition here. We're going to insert all the plugins for everything else, but all of them minus the Ghostgate plugin for these possibilities. We're gonna fix a little hole. I gotta sanity check myself here. Four total, yeah. We're getting three here. All right. Now let's, uh, whoop. Don't try this at home. Yikes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the shell. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm getting like a sort of an interactive terminal, a Python, IPython terminal with the website application. And I can basically interactively run Python code. So I can do stuff like this. There we go. And so yeah, essentially what I've done here is I, I put a variable m to the value of this is essentially a in Django Python parlance. This is a database query. We're looking for mod things in the database called mod. Objects is just a broad search. This can be like a predefined filter though, if you want. And then I'm saying get me something where the name equals that. And then I get my numbers that I was wondering about right here. Actually, it spat out Python that I can nicely copy pasta. Thank you, IPython. And so this is obviously bad because it has some you know, hardcore, hard-coded versioning. But for now, until we perfect the CFG generator, you know, this is going to have to do, and it will do, I think. I think I can just uh, reload the page. No crunching needed for this. It's a dynamic page of you. hey -o, there we go. All right. Just like we wanted. Um, for posterity, let's go ahead and look at some of the other presets. It's a hideous system, but it works, okay? <laughs> it works until it doesn't. High on my list of things I would really want to do is make the CFG generator, like, really fit to do what it do, you know. We'll get there. Cool. That seemed a little bit easier than I... I don't know why I was thinking we would have to muck around with it, but hey, all good. All right, there we go. Excellent. And then so if we're just some poor bastard that ends up here and we're like, okay, beautiful cities of Morrowind, and they give me... the name of my patch. Anywho. I'm trying to show how it's going to break now. If we go ahead and just assemble our own custom mod list here, it's going to be wrong. And so I could take a moment here to further spaghettify the spaghetti code. And I could say like, oh, you know, if you happen to also be using these mods, not going to do that today. We're going to keep the scope on this small because I do intend to basically fully rewrite the CFG generator at some point to be less hard-coded, less hacky, testable, you know, and this would be just counterintuitive to that. So this will have to do. Ah, yes, okay. And uh, a quick update on that. And then back to the change log. And I just want to say, too, um, it was really cool to look at the uh, 
change log from last week and it's like whew, you know we got quite a lot done so props gonzo you helped make that super easy for me would have taken a lot more time today begins 5.5 .5. This number. <laughs> you're unemployed, so it's something to do. Oh, okay, right on. Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Honestly, if I could quit my day job and just do Morrowind stuff, that would be pretty nice. I like my day job, though. I do, but... You know. Morrowind. And as I'm typing this out, I'm thinking to myself, man, this was a really interesting journey of discovery into the engine and sort of how it works. You know, I, I thought I would be I thought I would be polite and simply patch Hamaris's mod rather than outright directly edit it. And <laughs> I just uh, I can't put into words exactly what happened with those, in particular with the holes in the ground. Um, you know, I have a vague idea of something to do with like, it's an intersection of three mods changing the same cell right there by Ghostgate. But really, it's it's a quite beyond my understanding of how the engine works. And and yeah, <laughs> so that was that was a really interesting learning experience. Um, and I'm glad the patch finally seems to be, you know, good to go. Knock on wood. All right, I, I think I think that's basically good to go. Let's um We'll do that. In the meantime, I'll commit. Excuse me. Gonzo says it's really cool because it seems so practical to know the ins out and outs of that. Um, oh, what did I do? Huh? Did I goof something? Hang on. Yeah, I will say what you just. Oh, haha, it doesn't like my shell session over here. <laughs> All right. Um, I assume you mean like the the guts of the engine, right? Um, and yeah, you know, um, some people might say, oh, you know, that kind of demystifies the whole game and ruins it for me. And, uh, I could see that. I could definitely see that, but I'm like a tinkerer kind of a person who likes to poke under the hood. So like, you know, it's a natural kind of evolution of my, you know, uh, being obsessed with this game. And, uh. And now that I'm sort of, you know, kind of opening my horizons up to, like, actually creating mods or thinking about creating mods, we've had a couple good discussions, Gonzo, about some cool ideas, you know, um, I have to know about these things. You have to know about, like, the Toddisms. No disrespect, Mr. Howard. But otherwise, they're going to bite you. They're going to shoot you in the foot, and you're going to have holes in the ground that you can't explain. Or missing fence pieces, and I'll get to that later. That's bearing the lead a little bit about cleaning. Yeah, I have it as I have it as one of the last things because I really wanted to get some of this stuff done. But um, actually, I have to 
go to the restroom, and I am so sorry. I will be right back. Let's see. Here I am. Hey, thanks for waiting. Sorry about that. Some days I wake up early enough to drink my coffee and get the restroom in before the stream, but today... Oh, interesting. That's good. I don't really need this at all. Cool. Okay. And I'm actually gonna gonna do a quick old rebase there. That's a little get trick where you can just like there's no need for me to fix that in two commits, right? So I just took the two and put them into one. That's why I typed the nonsense, which you no longer see, into that commit there. Rebase, interactive rebase, handy get trick. Good to have in your tool belt. All right, let's try that again. I'm sure that was cool to watch while you were waiting for me to come back. It failed. Okay, let's see. We're going to go jumping ahead to that TOTSP. And I want to see what exactly do we say today. What is this? Some ginormous picture, apparently. Oh no, that's a this video. <laughs> that's way too big. So this is a this is a problem. We'll fix it at some point. This is actually one of my self-hosted videos when I was stubborn against using YouTube. And basically, if you're not in North America, it's impossible to watch because internet. So anyway, not to get too distracted. Okay, yeah, this is kind of missable, I feel like. You know. I'm going to put it in its own paragraph. Uh, color. Go ahead and stop over there. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Separate line. You know, when you start to jumble too much information together, I've noticed that it can easily be lost. I catch myself doing it sometimes, you know. Um, it's a virtue, I think, of document writing. Like... Especially when there's a lot of information to digest, like this page, you know, um, it's best to kind of, I think, probably keep it, you know, concise. Each point separate. Don't challenge people too much, just with the task of reading. 
that's a pretty I think that's a pretty easy one and I don't think uh, it's worth bumping the you know technically we updated it today like just rewording something like this I don't know if it even really needs a change log I'm not gonna do a change log for this I'm not gonna up change the updated time um because I just don't think it's something you know yeah yeah I don't think it needs its own page Gonzo says yeah I mean I think this is I think this is good. Once the tests go and we can actually view it on the on my little local dummy site, I think we're good to go on this one. You could easily get into the realm of overthinking this. Right, and like burdening oneself with too much work because you gotta like, you know, try to document everything. It's not an important I think this would clutter the change log. It's not an important change for somebody who's already set up. And if you're not set up, if you missed it somehow, you will know because the game will yell at you. So, as did that poor person who came out to Discord. I don't know if you recall the other day. <laughs> it's what made, prompted me to write this down. All right. So, yeah. This is something container ownership. Um. So, this is an interesting false statement here it's true but false while we're waiting for the website to crunch container ownership merged into tomorrow and anti-cheese yes but no um and i honestly didn't look at the plugin contents to confirm this but apparently the bcom beautiful cities of morrowind patched version of morrowind anti-cheese removes the ownership changes so container ownership is not necessarily in that version of the patch you know made obsolete by it but then there is the ownership overhaul mod which does basically make this obsolete we're not going to swap that out today but it is in it is interesting to note that yeah this is a true but also false statement and basically it's another easy check for us today because it, it, it amounts to nothing that we have to do but a discussion i think that is nonetheless worth having um and also on a related note there is a sigorn patched version of Morrowind Anti-Cheese. And um, I took a quick look. They made some really good edits that integrate it with blood with uh, various difficulty mods that I can't name off the top of my head out there um, that we want in the BCOM version, but uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be a trivial merge of the two. So that's a discussion I want to have, you know, at another time, probably, if I can even pull somebody who knows really a lot about patching like Alvazir in, that would be great. Um, 6.0 edition, definitely, for uh, ownership overhaul, absolutely. I actually put it down here um, in the to-do. No link for it yet, but yeah. And the Twitch chat thing just got me. I got sick of carrying it over day after day, so this is in the future, too. Um, so yeah, anyway, quick note about that, um, and we did have a chat about that on the Discord channel, and some some very helpful users were great about chiming in with the details there and, and kind of figuring it all out. So um, in my local setup here, I do have ownership overhaul mixed in, and yeah, it seems to just integrate fine. So all right, moving on. Um, I was trying to – I forget what exactly I was looking for. Something. And it was contents that were in an extra CFG – section for a mod and I thought uh you know the search box should really search that and it doesn't so I mean let's take a quick it's been probably like five years since I looked at that code so this could get really ugly but let's just take a quick look uh sir search uh, oh my there's a model for search no okay <laughs> oh, what am I thinking all right views Okay. Advanced search. Yes, I started to make this code. It says advanced search coming soon on the search page. And it's said that for like six years. I st apparently forgot I started doing this, but I did start doing it. But that's not the code that we're concerned with here. Nor is this, I don't think. Oh, okay. Who? This is some very, yeah. I even have a note here about how this is very cryptic code. Duplicate results. Yeah, so this is 
search vector here is a uh, and search query are yeah okay so if I go to the top of this page we got some Yeah, I have like some special Postgres bits going on in here. And I have no idea what any of this code does. <laughs> I wrote it so long ago. Oh, like spitting out some custom SQL here, I guess. Yikes. All right, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as checked, and then have it be a later thing. Yeah, yeah. Gonzo. All I see are SQL queries, and my eyes glaze over. I mean, this is a this is that, and so much more craziness going on here. I oh okay. I'm like, I did I write this, but I forgot. I didn't notice here. We're looking at actually the Django search code. This is not my code. Whoo! I'm like, how did I? When did I write that? <sighs> And this is actually what I wanted to look at here. Yeah, this, okay. So search query, search rank, search vector. These are Postgres SQL specific features that are basically supposed to um, be a little smart about how it ranks things. And it ends up being like, if we do this, for example, Basically, no other mod does this, but <laughs> we've got dupes here. And I, uh, you know, if I do this on my local version of the website, check this out. It's been a while. Maybe it does it again. Yeah, see, no dupes here. Probably a bit newer version of Postgres. Certainly a different version of Linux. But yeah, I mean, why the dupes? Only on the server. This is on my laptop. This is on the server. You know, this is the kind of thing that I haven't fixed for some time. So anyway, let's look at here. Or mod, result, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with this thing. I'm glad I looked at it though, because yeah, I, had, I was annoyed by the lack of, uh, you know, searching in extra CFG. Um, actually, I'm not going to mark that as to do as done because it's not done. We're going to put it on the for the future list, and I'll probably do that off stream because that's probably some deep, deep rabbit hole diving there. Okay, state limitations of the CFG generator on that page. And if I remember back into my past self, what I meant by that or intended by that was to just say here. You know, you're going to have, you might have different folder paths. You might have different plugin names if you've done some cleaning, which we're going to get to next. You know, you might not have exactly the results that you get from, you know, for example, clicking this button. Maybe you put things in, you know, a different folder, maybe... Options changed something. So it might be handy to kind of just put something here. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. G generator. Okay. And I feel like first off, this should probably be more pronounced. Should it be a level one heading? I don't know. But I'm going to try that. Excuse me. Should it be a level one heading? I don't know. That seems to. Ooh, well, if <laughs> if it is a level one heading, it should be centered. Boom, center. Too much. I'm leaving it. 
Uh, maybe I should. All right. All right. I'm backing down from that. I'm going to make it a level three heading underneath here, but above the buttons to report a problem. This feature is a work in progress, and we're going to put those limitations right here. Give me an unlord, unordered list. I'm just going to go ahead and spit out a couple bullets there in advance. And uh, I really wish I would have wrote down some specific gotchas. That's fair to say. Let's see what we got here. Will uh, Gonzo says, "Will Delta let you know, though?" Yeah. So I mean. It depends, right? If if you're like just enabling everything for everything, and you and one of the everything's that you enable, it, it requires a you know a master that you don't have, then it will yeah. In those cases, it will blow up and be like, yo, you don't have the right master. But if it's like, for example, a case like this one with the ghost fence plugging in my patch, it's not really gonna know. You know what I'm saying? Um, if there's something that like outright replaces something else, it wouldn't really know. That's when you would have to depend on something like this or MLOCs that has knowledge given to it by humans about uh, you know these kinds of things. So um, Delta plugin is definitely a good sanity check. OpenMW validator written by me also a good sanity check, but the limit it has it limits as to what it knows about your your content. I feel like I was going to have more bullets, but I don't know. May not completely match the output of the generator. Multiple plugins, the generator cannot tell you in every case. Yeah, I really thought there would be more bullets. I don't know. Uh, and just looking at this, I'm not thinking of anything that's... Yeah, see, like, oh, okay. So, hey, look at this. That's a dupe. Hey. Okay. Let's go back to that code. Just, uh, uh -huh. what, whoop. what happens if we do this? There we go. So what did I break by fixing that? That's my next question. Why did I have it this way? Hmm. What am I looking at? I heart vanilla. Let's do this. Something's up. I must have broken something. Oh, that's that's right. Okay. 
Interesting. I'm still skeptical. Yeah, this is totally wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yep, yep. Good catch, Gonzo. Yeah. Oh, man. See, this is why it's painful to have special cases. Okay, so now I see. Do it else if fights I don't write enough Python else is not accessed. Okay, good. Preset is not Is that even right? There we go. Ugh. That should zap that one. No? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, this is why I dread looking at this code. It's the only place where I insert that manually. So let's go back to what I had before. I'm very confused about where these come from. And I hate this code. Yeah, this is the, oh no, don't try this at home. This is where the, the magic happens, though. This is what ends up being right here. And this huge one-liner. Wow, yeah. This is, wh this is where I do all of this. And there's some, there's some hackery going on here for sure. But I... What the? This is wrong. Oh my. Okay. Wow. We just unearthed a rat's nest here, didn't we? Oh my. This is for okay. I mean, <laughs> thankfully, this is an unreachable condition here because that variable doesn't exist. But let's just go ahead and 
erase that. And okay, um, all right, I think I know what I want to do here. I need to, we're going to go into the depths of hard coding order numbers once again. You come on now. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, we're going to pop out the ESM because that's one of the problems, right? We got a dupe ESM here. And we're going to pop out this one, both of these. Thinking internally, there has to be a better way. I should just be not putting this. and C floor for open MW. Yeah. What's going on here? All right. Going to do some puts debugging here. Just trying to see if we get into this little branch here. We do. Many times. Many, many times. That's expected. So my next question is, what the hell is this? Oof. <laughs> oh my. All right. Well, it's actually not that much. It's just printing it a bunch. So that's fine. But I want to see now. Oh, wow. It's a little painful. All right. Uh, uh, we want distant. So, yeah, I mean, there's our dupes and the notes and everything. We don't want anything, any of that in there. because we have special cases. So really, am I just derping and what we really want to do? Uh, all I see is blonde, brunette, redhead, matrix code. Yeah, indeed. Only if this code were that. This is like puke, crap, warts, other disgusting things. <clears throat> Rubber vomit, yeah, no good. <laughs> So what I was hoping we would get here what I was hoping we would get here is nothing. I'm saying do nothing. If the name is distant C floor, do nothing. Don't put your plugins in there because we have it's not exactly what I want, but it's because we have the dupes here. Yeah. What gives? Really, what gives? Oh. <sighs> yeah, OK. 
Okay, we can see this right here. Happening lots. I feel like we shouldn't get there so many times. This is a very bad piece of code right here. It's very... And so, okay, yeah, we're seeing this for each one of the entries in the, how much you want to bet. I'm all over the place right now. Don't try that at home. Yikes. That explains the numerous hellos. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I'm starting to understand this code. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, very bad. Oof, this is a very expensive. I'm just looking at this code thinking, oh man, when did I write this? So expensive. For a looping and then a loop in the loop. What if, what if this is what's happening? Logically, this is what seems to be happening. We're falling into that case down there. Yeah, okay. What gives? Ah. Of course. Hacks on top of hacks, and this is what you get. Ah. That's better. I had a feeling that I broke something. I just had this feeling, you know? Like an itch, you know? Just like, Argh. this was too easy when we did something else earlier. I'm like, this is too easy. Boom. And this is the right plug-in once, right ESM once. Yay, we did it. I was starting to get a little worried there. What the heck did we break? Just to clarify, this boils down to, where am we at here? One line change. When I fixed the distant this thing here, when I made the when I made the CFG generator not clash with my patch, I broke this because I made it an if instead of just a different branch of this selection down here, which made this one fall into there, blah, blah, blah. This is why we need tests. That's more of a cheeky commit message than a good one, but yeah, I'm having fun here. Uh, okay, back to the original thing we were trying to say. Uh, <laughs> we noticed problems while we were doing something else. You know, it's coming down to these two bullet points when you see it moments. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, Gonzo. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, I think this is basically all we need to say, right? Like... It's a work in progress. Folder paths may not, may not match. Cases where it provides multiple plugin and it cannot yet tell you what to use in every case. Am I missing something? I think that's a pretty okay implementation of this bullet point that I had in the list. I think this basically, it looks good and we can always just 
build onto it. All right. No, 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 no. Okay. Um. Ah, Gonzo says, honestly, if you just read the CFG, you should be able to tell what's going on from context for the most part. I helped someone last night who had a double slash in the middle of the data path, and I'm a little unsure, but that seems like a no-no. It should be. I was about to say no, it's fine, but could very well be not fine. Honestly, the config parser for OpenMW is a black box for me. I don't know a lot about it, but I, I that's my intention. Thank you for saying that. That was my intention with the CFG You know, um, generator is... That actually gives me an idea of some further things to say. Um, it's meant to be a reference. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not replacing Mod Organizer 2 or MLOX or anything like that, but it is meant to be a reference, you know? And ideally, you could copy paste it. We're just not there yet. Um, Useful reference for data and kind of yeah. I think that's okay. I think that little addendum there basically rounds it out nicely. Whoop! Whoop! What did I do? Oh my gosh! I just did something. I have no idea what. Emacs, what did you do? Oh, wait. What is this? Question mark for help. Ediff. Oh, cool. This is something I've never stumbled upon before. Must be like some advanced diffing thing. I'm going to go ahead and press the Z key to quit. Wow. I've used Emacs for like eight years, and I'm still finding weird things like that. If I'm like mashing on the keyboard too recklessly, I'll stumble on things. All right, what was I trying to do now? Yeah, this is the e-diff thing, weird. Okay, I could see that being useful if I knew what the hell to do with it. Okay, let's talk about cleaning. Cleaning is a problem that seems to, as far as I can tell, affect Elder Scrolls and Fallout games made by Bethesda up until Fallout 4. I can't speak to the nature of why those games, later games, um, suffer from the need to clean. But if you know absolutely nothing about cleaning, let's start from the beginning. Do you need to do it? Should I do it? Should I clean plugins? Um, it's a bit of a almost taboo thing because the primary tools for doing it are, as far as I know, all command line. Um, and a lot of gamers are pos possibly uncomfortable with doing that. So I had this page up here and I wrote a dirty plugin or one that contains GMST contamination. Those two words, right? GMST contamination. What am I even talking about? So let's go ahead and actually close that because that's just already too deep into the weeds. And before I get too deep into the weeds here, I actually have to run to the restroom again. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. But we are going to demystify this topic and answer the question once for all. Should I clean? Is it worthwhile? I will be right back.
Hello, hello, welcome back. Thank you for waiting, and sorry to keep you waiting. So, we're talking about cleaning plugins. What is cleaning? How does a plugin get dirty? What is dirty? What does it all mean? The best source of information for this is the TES3 command program itself. And if you just type TES3 command help, you will be greeted by the friendly, come on, don't try this at home, by the friendly usage notes here. And so you get a bunch of you get a bunch of options here, but what's really interesting is this part where it says description. Cleans plugins of various junk. The goal of the clean command is that it should always be safe to use with no options to get the default cleaning behavior. Much of what is considered dirt is with respect to a plugin's masters. That is the key point here. And what this doesn't exactly say in simple terms is if a very common dirty thing you see is a plugin might change ambient lighting or water height to exactly what Morrowind.esm has, for example. It's completely harmless change in that context, but like there's no there's no reason to do that. And it's one of those changes that the original construction kit will just simply put into your plugin for you as a as a miss feature, as a bug. Duplicate records, evil GMSTs, this is like best best described here. Evil GMST is defined as a GMST from the list of 11 Tribunal GMSTs or 61 Blood Moon GMSTs that are inadvertently introduced to a plugin by the construction set with specific values. So basically just like loading up, you know, Tribunal and or Blood Moon values into your plugin because why not? They don't need to be there. They're in Tribunal and or Blood Moon. But it's just something that... The original CS does for you as again as a bug as a misfeature um and ambient lighting and water height are two of the most common things you see um dirty in a plugin so let's take a let's take a look at some of the plugins that I have here that are potentially dirty um my favorite house mod here abandoned flat 2.0 is dirty out of the box and there's all kinds of stuff here what does this output mean? It's just a bunch of text, but what does it mean? So what you see here very at the very top here, cleaning the plugin that we gave it, it's loading the master. And then it's telling us there's all these duplicate records. And what this means is that abandoned flat ESP is redefining these things that are defined in Morrowind.esm, and it's probably not intentional. There are rare exceptions when it would be intentional, and I'm gonna to get to that. You can see here, just yeah, all this duplicate. These are less, much, much, much less common, but they are not intentional, I assure you. I've cleaned them out, the mod works. Redundant ambient lighting changes, you know, just like, there's, there's no reason for this. It's not gonna break your game. This kind of stuff will not break your game, but maybe, maybe you're loading something after Morrowind.esm, but before the abandoned flat that changes the ambient lighting to, you know, Aldredania. And then abandoned flat's going to put it back to what Morrowind.esm has. And that's where you start not wanting dirty changes. Um, but there's sometimes when you, you do, and the changes are not actually dirty. And I will just demonstrate one example of that right here. Let's see here. Excuse me. Can I just load up a quick minimal configuration here of uh, BCOM and my friendly patch? Pay no attention to some of these other things in here. And I'm going to show you what I mean about a. So, actually, real quick. 
Oh, Johnny, your plugin is dirty. I cleaned it with TES3 command, and it said there's a redundant water height. And okay, so that's true. There is this is a this is a definitely a carryover from Hemeris's plugin. But these are not dirty. They are duplicates, but they're intentional. But Johnny, how can you have an intentional duplicate? That makes no sense. And this is when we start getting into the weeds of the engine implementation. And I will try to show you to the best of my understanding what's going on here. And we'll fire up the trusty OpenMWCS program here. And we'll open my patch up. What's the problem here? Oh, <laughs> just simply missing a folder path here. Oh. All right, and so what we have here with the intersection of beautiful cities of Morrowind. No, 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 no. The intersection of beautiful cities of Morrow Morrowind, first off, Morrowind.esm, beautiful cities of Morrowind, and Hemeris' original Ghostgate plugin. We have original Morrowind that is putting Ghostgate there, as you know it in the default game. You have BCOM, which is changing it a lot. And then loaded after that, you have dynamic distant buildings with even further changes to some of the same objects. And by, by the, some of the same objects, I mean the ghost fence itself. Specifically, the two fence pieces that TES3 Command co complained about accused me of being dupes and dirties. This is one of them right here. This guy right here. And what I had to do was, I did, I literally duplicated. So by default, out of the box, um, maybe I'd be better off loading it in how you saw it before my patch. But out of the box, when you have the dynamic distant buildings patch loaded with BCOM, you basically have two fences going through here. You got the vanilla fence, and then you have the, the BCOM fence, which are distinct. <clears throat> but they basically link up right here and start becoming the normal ghost fence everywhere else right here. But what you have is you have a pylon right here that's sort of just to the right of this one with a, with a fence that's connecting right here at the right place. And okay, so we're getting rid of the non-BCOM fence. We'll just make that out of, you can see the editor NIF marker right there. Actually, that's the red thing make it the editor marker and boom it's invisible right no problem right well what i think the problem with that is and why my duplicate is required otherwise there's no top to the fence here is because i think the edits done by bcom and ghostgate fortress fortress they don't delete this the vanilla one they're moving it actually they're probably actually moving it it's the same reference from the vanilla game but moved. So when I put the the editor marker on this one, I'm also nuking out this one. Now, as I'm talking to you about this now, I think, oh, well, maybe I could create like a, a unique instance and a unique object that's not going to look like a dupe to TS3 command, but like, I don't know, that's just bloating the plugin. Don't clean it. That's why I had to do it. Engine plumbing. It's weird. Um, and, and yeah, so, so, this red dot here you see represents the one from the vanilla fence. Right here you can see XGG fence 02. It's different, but actually the same fence. Weird as that sounds. Um, so yeah, that's why I have a dupe in here. That's why you shouldn't clean this. Um, and I suspect there are similar reasons why you shouldn't clean the Beautiful Cities of Morrowind plugin which there I don't think is a note on the mod page. I have a note in in my personal config about has a link to some discord message where random pal states don't clean it. And and there are legit reasons why, you know. So, it's cleaning is is a little bit of a mysterious thing. Thanks for going into detail there Gonzo. Yeah, you, Gonzo says you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Um 
this is a topic that I actually avoided for a long time when I started modding because it's like, what what are we even talking about here? And then props go out to Enkita, if I remember her name correctly, who emailed me once and was like, how come you don't talk about cleaning on your website? And I was like, uh, well, you know, in a nutshell, I was like, I don't know Jack about it. And uh, so she basically schooled me on it. And from there on, I started to like actually care about it. And I make an attempt to clean you know, basically everything. Um, and it's really hard to, it's really hard to say, cause I didn't make these mods. Like are these chain, are these, is the duplicate instance in Caldera Priory? Like, is that in, like, I doubt myself now that I've had this experience, I'm doubting myself, but it's a pretty specific context where my duplicates were required. And I feel like very specific such that a mod like called air priory wouldn't be running into some, bumping into something like that you know and and yeah water ambient light water height from shank shovel you know that's just that's probably something that the vanilla cs put in there for for seal off and they just didn't realize it you know almost certainly not going to break the game you know maybe Danae's new shank uh shank's wife mod changes those bcom i think actually does change shank shovel stuff um, so you might lose some of those changes here, you know, because of this. So you do want to clean it, but like this, is this a, a door? The door is a dupe. So I feel like you would know real quick, right? Let's take, let's actually take a look. You would know real quick if the door to shank shovel was duplicated. And, and so like maybe they're duplicating the vanilla door and then that would end up in like a BCOM, you know, it's just like the engine is really weird and doesn't quite behave in ways that I would expect. You know, I was very taken by surprise with the behavior about deletes. Uh, it makes sense. You know, the plugins load in a sequential order. P this plugin loads that record. This plugin deletes that record and so on and so forth. Right. What's the problem? Well, it doesn't quite work like that. It does, but. It doesn't. All right. There we go. Oof. Uber potato mode. But we should be able to s crawl over to Shank Shovel here and. I'm like disoriented right now. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> no. Where are you at? Here we go. So yeah, I mean, you know, a dupe door could be bad because maybe it's a it's an activator, it'll take you to the wrong cell. Maybe BCOM has like a modified shank shovel, you know, with some extra lights and stuff. You got the the mystery mod Danae came out with, you know, there's going to be changes in there you might lose, you know. So you want to, stuff like ambient light, yes. Water height, yes. They're potentially harmless changes, but like, they're not intended. You don't want them. You just don't. So <clears throat> it's important, I think, to definitely clean mods, but like, you got to pay attention. It's not a silver bullet. And, you know, if somebody says don't clean this, they hopefully have a good reason and you should just go with it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's cleaning in a nutshell, I guess. That's all I really have to say. Um, this page really needs a... It just needs some love. I don't know. Because um, it just jumps too far into the weeds. If you don't, you know, this page should really be a little bigger. It should start off with, you know, I don't know anything about plugins. Uh, I'm sorry, cleaning plugins, and uh, I need to learn because it's important, you know. Um, so this page could arguably be arguably be a lot more well written, and um, I'm not going to do it today because I want to actually sit and think and take time to do it. But uh, certainly, we'll run it by Uganzo. Um, but what I am going to do is I wanted to. I know that Dark Basic has actually filed a lot of issues um, regarding cleaning. And I wanna I wanna check these. You know, let's go through and check these. And we should document them. You know, if they do in fact need cleaning. Now, one potential gotcha here is that uh, you know, I have uh, of course it didn't work. I 
have version. I'm trying to find the version that I have. But basically what I'm trying to say is I have version A of TES3 command. You know, Abbott has version B. Eddie's got version C. You know, there's been a couple ever since John Moonsugar basically dropped out of the scene. There's been a couple forks going on. And uh, I'm honestly not. There are differences. You know, you got version 3 consider some things dirty that four doesn't and vice versa you know and it ma- so it matters and if i look at my own website here yeah 3.37 so there's 0.4 Point three seven. Okay, so yeah, that's what generally what I'm telling people to use. Um, I'm not really knowledgeable, excuse me, about the differences between point three and point four. You know, I know Abbott has some TS three command hacks that he used, but I haven't really looked into them a whole a whole lot. So I'm not I'm not really on the up and up with that. Um, so if you know. If any of this is outdated, let me know. But that matters, you know. And so, like, is Dark Basic using the same version as I am? Is he using point four? Is he getting like, uh, you know, description as a cleaner plugin needs cleaning says no. So yeah, this is the easy one. We can. Uh, did I already do this? Even let's take a look. As you're aware, Gonzo, I got really bad at, like, keeping on top of the issues there for a minute. And so, like, we have a hundred some plus, you know, issues. And maybe half of them could be closed. I don't know. But close. Maybe a quarter of them could be closed. I want uh, data seeds, category, player homes. Okay, and uh, fabulous. This is a good, by the way, this is a really good player home mod. I, I really liked this one a lot. Okay, needs cleaning true. Says no, I fixed this. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and employ that label you created. Needs closing. Feels good. Possibly a lot more with the cleaning, Gonzo says, but it seems like there's a lot more. That's a lot more complicated than you assumed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it is. It is. You know, there's no one size fits all. You should do it. The takeaway from that is my first question is, what is cleaning? Should I do it? You should do it, but there's no one size fits all, right? Like there are some weird situations um, and and logical scenarios where you can end up with data that looks dirty, but it's not. So there is some nuance to it. And uh, and I just want to say thank you to Niccolo Belli for filing all these issues. If you happen to check the stream, thank you, man. Um, appreciate it. And sorry for the delay on, delay on a lot of these. Join the Dark Brotherhood. Okay. let's. This is a fun one, by the way. If you haven't tried it yet, Gonzo and anybody else, I thought some of the assassinations were really clever. <laughs> Needs cleaning. Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do probably today at some point. I got to mow the lawn today. It's going to rain. And I want to mow before it rains. But what I want to do at some point today or this weekend. Edith, get out of here. Um, is maybe tonight. Um, go ahead and go ahead and close those ones that you marked as needs closing. Close my there, and um, you know we can bring some sanity to our issue backlog because I feel we're a lot in a lot better state than 147 issues. Astrologians Guild. Oh man, I'm actually looking forward to playing this one again. It was so good. Needs cleaning. Yes. This is good. Some backlog cleaning up. 
Long overdue. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Definitely should address some of these other ones that Niccolo fired, but for now I'm gonna stick it to I'm gonna stick to these ones. Multiple data paths. I think we do this now. Yeah, so that's another one that can be closed. <clears throat> Plugin extension case does not match. Whoops. Bad copy pasta there. Still have uh, switch to lowercase extension. Okay. Yeah, I mean I I yet another one I did. That's good. Yeah, see, this is like, I feel like this should have been a direct hit. Why is my database search giving me all this? Other, like, it should have been a direct hit on this. Tarball has a... Really? Huh. This I gotta see. What is that? Forty three. Sure enough. Well, we got to fix that. Hmm. That would be really interesting if the default one has lowercase. Oh, it does. All right, I'm not gonna fix this one because this is more CFG generator hacking and, and but I am gonna, for posterity, give that the right case. And I'll tag the issue here. Actually, first off, that's wrong. I think I can do this, actually. deep dark corners of the website code that I haven't looked at in a long time and I'm like thinking is this just gonna work it can't possibly be that easy maybe it would be
Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Not quite going to be that easy. Giving me the lowercase one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so only one, which is good. Okay, a clue. Because I don't know what I'm actually doing there. I forget what thing is supposed to be. Maybe the... Ah, yeah, okay. Really should be two hits in there, and I should be nuking the one with the cap. I'm not sure what's happening here. Yeah. <sighs> Something is not right. I think I I think ignored mods as like MGE XE and stuff like that, which I listed to explicitly say they're not compatible. Because I got, actually got a lot of questions about that. Can you run MGE XE with OpenMW? No, you can't. There's no point. And that's not a knock on MGE XE. I love the project and I love her and Hmm. 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 Getting way deep into spam zone here. All right. There's the no. <laughs> so where is it? Did I? Okay. My friends. This is what we have when we ha when we we get what we call a pebcac issue. And the problem exists between the computer and the keyboard, which is me. I just goofed. I'm looking at old data. I just been looking at the data from before I capsified the plugin. Whoops. Got out of the crunch zone. Please excuse me. I knew it was something. I knew that I was just brain farting. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that'll do it. Cool. 
So while that's crunching, let's take a look at we might like finish everything today. Almost everything. Like talked about cleaning. I mean, look at this list. Hold on. 75%. I think that's like the most progress in one day with that I've gotten in a while. Let's look back at May. Yeah, you got an 88%. Okay, we had a couple really good days back in May. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Well, I did take the time to kind of, um, you know, sanitize the list before the stream, and that helps keep the focus in, you know, and, and make things realistic. <clears throat> this will probably do tomorrow. And um, you may recall the discussions we had on Discord. Gonzo, um, welcome to the arena. Is broken in OpenMW for various reasons. Is it just like shot, you know, some scripting mistakes that vanilla is more relaxed about and it's just fine with that OpenMW's, you know, finger wags about? You'd be surprised how often you see that kind of a thing. So I was just thinking, we'll make a we'll make a testing character. I'll put on my potato friendly config and just load BCOM in that. And and we'll start, you know, we'll use the BCOM version and we'll first we'll I think this we'll do first. Run the plugin through the CS's validate function. I mean, we got time. Let's do that right now, actually, once I'm done. Um, we'll run it through the validate function. It's a decent way of finding, like, obvious mistakes, some which could possibly break the plugin. So um, we'll we'll check what I just did here with the, um, with the CFG generator and the Averith's legacy plugin. But then, yeah, we'll go ahead. Let's take a look at verifying, uh, validating the welcome to the arena patch. Because um, I feel like it should be fixable. And I'm feeling a little I'm feeling a little confident having written a few mods that use MW script lately. Um, shameless plug for one that I haven't quite released on Nexus yet, but Gonzo was kind enough to test it for me. Thank you so much. It's a mod I wanted to do for a while. And I call it... What do I call it? Ah, thank you. Oh no, stolen reports. Um, there is a MWSE Lua version of this made by Merlord and Danae, and I always thought, man, we really need something like this, you know. Um, and I did my first like mod logo picture that I actually spent time making. I used Krita to like. I took these screenshots myself. Um. Yeah, this will just randomize the location of a Jira's papers, as it says, and there's a cool um, BCOM enhanced version that has double the random possibilities. I'll probably upload that to Nexus tonight, get some feedback from there. Um, I don't actually know if it works on vanilla, though, so I might just put the caveat it's OpenMW only. I don't... It's so much harder for me because I'm not knowledgeable about vanilla and MGEXE and MWSE and all the best practices there. But like for, you know, you watch this stream, Gonzo, you know, it's super easy for me to test OpenMW, just wham, blam, wherever I want to go, I test it. And there's got to be a way to do that with vanilla, but I'm not really set up for that. So I don't want to like promise vanilla support and then I'm like shoddy about it. Uh, so yeah, okay, we're crunched down here. Let's load it up again. Will it blend? Boom. How about that? We did it. All right. I love it when things work out like that. And all I had to do, the code I had already written, who knows when, this stuff right here works unchanged. Who'd have thought? And all I had to do was change the capsage. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my. It's all coming up. Excuse me. All right. Um, This is a caps. Sneak oil 122. Hey, all right. So, actually, we're going to... I'm not going to say... Eh. I have mixed feelings about closing an issue before we actually deploy it to the real website. But I feel like it is probably fair to close something. So if I say close is pound 122, GitLab is going to be like, oh, okay. And it will actually close 
the issue, which on one hand is great because it saves me and you and anybody else who wants to help out on the team from having to go through and like comb through issues. But on the, at the same time, it's like, it's not fixed until it's on the website and it's live technically speaking. Right. Um, I'm not going to do it, but I would like to get to a place where we can actually effectively leverage that stuff and have things be a little more automatic. We don't need to waste our time shuffling issues around on GitLab. I think it's a waste. I would rather be fixing and creating stuff. Wow. All right. Um, cool. Well, um, let's see what we got. 20 minutes left here. So some of these, just kind of taking a quick look back here. I, there's nothing I can do. Actually, these, we're going to close these because... Okay, I could I could patch the concerned mods here for these, but like... Some of these are just like this one, for example. The mod is hard-coded to use MGEXE normal math paths. Paths. Not having the right path for the texture doesn't matter because OpenMW, the engine, does the right thing. So, like, you just get this noise, and, like, you could patch the the mesh to have the right path, but, like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It, you got to really pick your battles. <laughs> um, so I appreciate it, Niccolo, calling this out, but, like, I really think we're just going to close this with nothing to do because I'm not going to fix meshes. Yeah, okay. All right, let's let's go ahead and let's look at this welcome to the arena patch, shall we? I don't have to care too much about the load order. We got such a minimal setup here going on. And we're not actually going to run the game anyway. We're going to We're just going to open it in, in the CS. For posterity. It doesn't explicitly require it as a master, but I mean, they're meant to be used together. Mm, not going to load any of the other things. All right, and it helps that it thinks we're directly editing this because it'll be easier to see what things it complains about are directly from us. And by us, I mean this plugin, so verify. From the base CS screen, uh, you just click File, Verify. Let's see it filling up here. We're having a race. All right, and uh, uh, yeah, so it's not quite as easy. to tell okay I, let's I didn't add the data path for welcome to the arena so it's complaining about a bunch of missing stuff that is not necessarily missing so let's fix that we don't want that noise that's going to make it hard for us to actually see Real problems. All right, that's a little better. And what I'm mostly concerned with and this is where it becomes handy when scripts prefix their name. Modders sometimes prefix their script names like with their name. You know, for example, with dynamic buildings, it's HM underscore DDD. Very nice. You can actually then use pattern matching here in the editor. Topic web spinner. I don't know what that's from. <laughs> no idea. 
going to close that. So, okay. Flying blind here. Okay. And helpfully, it looks like this mod prefixes its script names with Arena. Very good. They all say Arena. That's so great. And I'll tell you right now, there's no script errors. Which on one hand is nice. But on the other hand, like, oh, so what's broken and how is it broken? Interesting. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Look, we have some brokenness here. Okay. How about that? Okay. So this is one thing that's really great about OpenMWCS. has really good error checking. It took me right to the line here where the thing is wrong. Uh, no, wait. 170. Click that. There we go. Uh, so that's just a warning, though. Yeah, these are all actually just... Now that I'm paying attention, these are all just warnings. Um, a warning... Not quite the same thing as an error. This isn't going to break anything. I'm sorry to say none of these are necessarily going to break anything. We should fix them, and I'm going to. And I might actually come back eventually and just do this with a patch. Yeah, you know what? These I'm going to fix with a patch. going to be fixing a couple scripts. There's no sense to directly edit the whole plugin. I don't know. It just seems rude to me. And it doesn't actually need that as a master, does it? Welcome to the arena really needs OAAB data, huh? Maybe that's something that random pal... Maybe that's something Random Pal did then. Okay. Um. It's better to do a patch in cases like this, in my opinion. It's better to do a patch because we're only fix we're only touching the things that need to be fixed, and they can change. You know, potentially change changes can be made to the base. Welcome to the Arena plugin, and it would still work. So let's fix all of these. Quite a lot more things here. <laughs> scripts. Where are my broken scripts? Where do they go? There we are. It's close to lunchtime. I'm starting to get into a hungry daze. All right. Let's click the thing, erase the line. Boom. Not going to break anything, but it's just better to, you know, it's better to not have these kinds of errors. Current day to day. So why does it think unknown variable two? Why does it think if I say just for. Oh, 
12. That's the wrong line even. 22, 24. Sapphite 90. Wait a minute. Line 120. I can read, I swear. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't like that. Set do once to zero. That's actually fine. That's fine too. Yeah, these are all fine. Or does it not want? Weird. Okay, well. That doesn't really need fixing, but these and if should be fixed. I suppose this will probably end up in my patches collection. Although Alvazir has a bunch of script fixes. Actually, let's see if he has that. Script fix. No, he doesn't. Okay, well. All right, then. Not all for naught. Oof. Gonna fix that, but I'm not gonna fix the indentation on that. Uh uh. <laughs> Nor this. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. I fixed that one. There you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's run the verify one more time. I think this is worth doing at least, though, before we go in trying to, with the intention to fix it, you know, let's fix the easy stuff. A, a duplicate end if without a matching if is something that the original Morrowind gave no shits about. <clears throat> you could do that all day long and it didn't care. Indeed, even here, it's a warning. But, like, you know. Oh, wow, that's wild, Gonzo says. <laughs> yeah, you're wondering how that could happen. Well, yeah, the the, sh the short answer is that the vanilla engine cares a lot less about mistakes than OpenMW. Um, OpenMW, and it, it's not simply because OpenMW developers were like, we want to care about the mistakes. It's because the script uh, parser is implemented completely differently for OpenMW. Whereas you have vanilla scripts are compiled down to bytecode, and that's executed. OpenMW script parser is an interpreter, reads the code directly, you know. Um, and so, yeah, just in, in implementing a correct parser, they kind of like, you know, shook out all of these, these problems. I'm still, no, not this one. I'm still a little bothered by unknown variable two. Huh? Line 24, column 14. Oh, that's a typo, but it looks like it's consistently typoed at least. Yeah, this bothers me a lot. 24, line 24. Hmm. 120 down here. I mean, it's the same... Okay, it's complaining about both of those, at least. 
Is it because these are global variables and it doesn't like that? No. No, the blue ones are global, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Seems like a bug in the parser, you know, in the in the validate thing. Verify. Because, I mean, this is right, friends. This is right. Yeah. I mean, it's totally right. Arena bet team. Oh, wait a minute. Bet winner. Arena dealer. Well, this is... What is this? Arena dealer period arena bet winner syntax. It's not mad about set versus set, is it, with a caps? No, I don't think so. Good question. But no, I don't think so. I think actually all of these are completely case insensitive. Like everything. <laughs> Which is why this works. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this. Capital D-I here, capital O, and then a little, like, oh, whoa. So yeah, that's why this kind of stuff works. Um, but I think the the unknown variable is not two. I think I'm reading the message wrong. It's bet team. That's just not here anywhere. Ah, oh, the plot thickens. Let's look at our global variables, shall we? Arena bet team is not here. That's a problem. So I think we're stumbling into some of the issues that this mod has. I don't even want to think about how it works in vanilla, if it does. <laughs> but yeah, bet winner, none of that's here. And then up here we see this strange arena dealer syntax, which I didn't know you could do like to put a period on something to reference an attribute is the common programming language syntax. I just didn't know MW script could do that. I'm pretty sure it can't without MWSE uh, v1, which may may do that. I don't know. I never I never mess with that. I thought it just added functions, not syntax. All right, so yeah, we don't see a there is no arena dealer. What is that? So object, right? Maybe. Whew. This is getting weird. Arena dealer is an NPC. Guard. Oh, no. Wow. <sighs> I really have no idea what's going on right now. What, you know, set, so can you put a variable on the, I'm going to have to ask Eddie about this, folks. Eddie5, one of my Discord buddies, who's an old school hacker and he knows about this kind of stuff. I'm going to have to ask people who know things, but uh, yeah, you have it right here. There's deep, dark corners of MW script doing things that are clearly wrong but are totally fine in the eyes of the vanilla executable and uh we're gonna have to probably leave it at that let's bring the um let's bring the to-do list up shall we you know i'm checking this for today just because we took a look at it but we're gonna revisit this tomorrow for sure and this is a, a note we're gonna crack 
but I wanted to speak a little bit about this point here. And basically, I got to thinking that the changelog page for a mod list was, frankly, hideous. And let's just pull that up right now. Changelog. And I mean, okay. Wow, what's so bad about it, Johnny? Well, I mean, the fact is... It's huge. I mean... I'm not, ha and I'm about halfway done scrolling now, and there's just too much information on this one page. So my intention is to cut the page off right here where it says release 5.4, just list the releases, maybe put like a date range on the releases, right, you know, to give people a, a clue. We could probably like say what's the last item, what's the first item pretty easily and give a date range. And then when you click 5.4, it will take you to change log slash, you can see I've got the the URL path here, it would take you to a whole other page of the for the whatever release with just the listing of the release on that page. Um, and I think that we will not miss anything by losing the every release version on one page setup because it's just hideous. There's just too much here. So that's something I wanted to do too. Maybe we won't do that tomorrow. Maybe we will. Maybe I won't even do that on the stream. I don't know. That's like some, yeah, right? It'll be totally cleaner. Thanks, Gonzo, for the sanity check there. Um, you know, maybe it will be interesting to do on the stream. It's going to be mostly Python Django coding, but it should be pretty easy to whip that up pretty quickly, I think. Um, some HTML, too. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, pleasure as always, Gonzo, my man. I'll chat with you on Discord probably. And uh, folks out there in Twitch and YouTube land, it's been great having you. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next stream. Cheers. <laughs>